So last session uh, we discussed about how to draw the isometric view and isometric projections of uh, regular solids like uh, prism, pyramid, cylinder and cone. But practically we will not be using always the full solid and there are situations where we will cut one portion of the solid and draw the remaining portion of the solid. So that is where uh, today we will see about how to draw the isometric view of frustum of a solid and truncated solids. So we will start with this problem where you have a frustum of a hexagonal pyramid of a base side 20 and the top side of the frustum is 8 millimeters which rests on the HP on its base such that two of its base sides are parallel to BP and the height of the frustum is 55 millimeters. See how we will draw the uh, isometric view of this pyramid. So as usual we will draw the top view of uh, the hexagon. So this is the top view of the hexagon, we will name it. And join all the corners because it is a pyramid. Right, this is the uh, base of the pyramid and uh, of course we have cut the top portion of it, it is a frustum of the pyramid. And what will be the shape of the top of the frustum? See it is a regular pyramid and when you say frustum you are cutting it parallel to the base of the pyramid. Means the top side also will be a regular hexagon but will be of reduced size and that is what is given here as the side of the top edge is 8 millimeters. So now we will draw the uh, top view of the top portion of your pyramid. So now we will name these corners as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we have the base of the pyramid and this is the top portion of your pyramid or the frustum area of the pyramid. So now as usual because it, it, it contains non-isometric lines we have to enclose both the things in, in a box. After having done this, we will draw the isometric view of this top view. So this is the top view of this outer box or for the base of the other hexagon. And now as usual, we will transfer all these uh, points A, B, C, D, F to that view. Well, since you are already familiar with uh, how to draw this uh, isometric of the hexagon, I am not explaining on that. So now, uh, the last session also I told you that an isometric view when there is a solid, we, we assume that it is totally enclosed in a box. So similarly, this frustum is also enclosed in a box. If you assume like that, the height of the box will be 55 millimeters because what is given here is the height of the frustum is 55 millimeters. So from all the four corners erect vertical lines equal to a height of 55 millimeters. Right, so your frustum is enclosed within this box. And now, the top of this, what will you see here? In the top of this is, what you will see is the smaller hexagon which is the frustum of that part. So what I have to do is draw this square 
when draw this box on this surface right. so having drawn this now transfer all these points from here to there so again the same procedures again x again as you do for this also will do for this So because when you are seeing from the top, the top face of the frustum will be fully seen. So I have darkened it. Now connect these corners with the bottom corners. So these are the visible edges of the frustum of the pyramid. And again, uh, one point I want to emphasize, this height of the, so this is a frustum, so the height of the pyramid is not given inside, the height of the frustum is given. And so this height will be, this height will be 55. Of course, I have not drawn the front view of this, because it's not needed, if you want, you can draw it for clarity's sake. will be the front view of that and finally we have got the isometric view of the pentagonal I'm um, sorry uh, hexagonal pyramid or the same procedure you have to adapt for a pentagonal pyramid so if it is a pentagonal pyramid this outer one of the base will be again a pentagon and this will be a smaller pentagon and the isometric view will be like this right so the previous problem is how to draw the first term of a Pyramid. First term means where the cutting plane is parallel to your base. Now we will see how to draw the isometric uh, view or isometric projection of a truncated solid. Truncation is where the cutting plane cuts the solid incline to the base. So now we have a, 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 a pentagonal pyramid. If you look at uh, the size, uh, if the pyramid is uh, high to 60 and there is a section plane which is inclined at 45 degrees to the horizontal plane. Uh, and cuts through the axis of this pyramid from a point a 33 millimeters from the apex and this is cutting all the inclined edges or all the slant edges of the pyramid and I have drawn the top view of the uh, pyramid and the section points are marked as 1 dash, 2 dash, 3 dash, 4 dash and 5 dash which is on the back side or on the hidden edge and I have projected those points here of course since you already studied sections of solids I need not again elaborate on how to get all these things. So from here I projected, I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Probably at this point I want to recall and remind you that this particular slant edge O, E is perpendicular to this. So you can't directly get a point on this. So you draw a horizontal line, project it down and cut an arc to get this. For so this you already done but still I want to just recollect it. So now I got uh, this, I need to draw the isometric uh, view of this truncated uh, pyramid. So what I have done here initially I have drawn the isometric view of the base, the uh, uh, base of the uh, pyramid. So now uh, of course I have got these points. So in the earlier case because it is a first term what we did we enclosed it in a box and we drew a box and on the top face of the box we drew this but here it's not like that you can't enclose it because it's the cutting plane is inclined so you can't enclose it in a box so then how do we draw the isometric view of it okay so now we'll take this case say for example i have point one this point one i have to mark it there 
So what I can do is, you draw a vertical line, draw a vertical line from this point 1, let's name this cutting point as 1, 1. So now what you have to do is, measure this distance and mark the point here. And then, see these two lines are parallel, this is uh, 1, 1 and this line they are parallel. So what you have to do is, measure this distance 1, 1 to 1 and draw a line which is parallel to this. Uh, probably for convenience we will name it, uh, we will call these corners as uh, Right, now come back here. So this 1, 1, 1 is parallel to PS. So from 1, 1, take this 1, 1, uh, 1 and draw a line which will be parallel to PS. And of course you know this distance and mark it here. So this will be my point 1. So similarly, now coming to point 2, again drop a vertical here to cut on this, so I will get 2, 1. Measure this distance P, 2, 1. Measure P, 2, 1 and mark it here. Right? Then measure this distance 2, 1, 2. Again here this 2, 1, 2 is parallel to PS, right? So measure 2, 1, 2 and from here draw a line parallel to PS. On that line mark this point 2. I mark the point 2. And similarly for 3, so again this 313 is parallel to your PS and uh, mark, uh, I mean measure P31 and mark it here. Right, from 3, 1, measure the distance and draw a line parallel to PS. This will be 3. And similarly for 4. Four one, measure four one four. This again is parallel to your PS or parallel to QR. Both are same because these two are parallel and all are parallel to each other. So from four one, draw line parallel to QR. As I told you, QR and PS is also parallel to each other. So on that you mark uh, 4. And similarly for 5. Again this already is a vertical line. It's already a vertical line. Uh, say 5, 0. This 5, uh, 5, oh, sorry, 5, oh is parallel to this. So measure this distance e to 5 right and of course this e5 will be parallel to your ps or qr and mark this point 5 right but these are not on the base these are all at certain heights at what height will these the five points be. Now go to the front view 
and for point one, point one, measure the vertical distance, not this inclined distance, but the vertical distance. Measure this vertical distance or the vertical height, and from this point, erect a vertical line equal to height of this. Or, in other words, measure this height from this point at the given height, mark the corresponding point. So let's take this as one dash, and similarly for two. Again, when I project this section point two here, this is the point, and from here to here, that vertical height you have to take it. Right? So, this is one. So, I got uh, all the five points. In case of a first term, all the five will be at the same height, whereas this is an inclined plane, so each will be at a different height. So, we have located all the Five points. Once I located that, then join them. So this is the top. I mean the. Uh, truncated portion of it. Now connect these corners to the base corners. So this is uh, because one is on OA. So this is the isometric view of the truncated pentagonal pyramid. Of course, probably it is not slightly disproportionate, but once you draw with actual dimensions and you will be able to get a perfect thing. So here you can see this point, uh, actually this will be at higher point because point 1 should be high and uh, the other point should gradually come down. It will be a tapering face. So that is how your isometric view should look like. Right? So now we will see how to draw the uh, isometric view of a truncated cylinder. So we have a cylinder here of a uh, certain diameter, certain height and there is a section plane inclined at some angle with the HP. The angle is such that it, the section plane cuts all the generators of the cylinder. So I have drawn the top view and the front view of it. I have marked the section points. So because I have divided this into eight uh, uh, divisions, I have eight uh, generators. So I get eight section points. So one dash, two dash, etc. Up to eight dash, and the top view of that I have got here. So these are all routine things which you already have done. So now we need to draw the isometric view, and obviously draw the isometric view of the base of the cylinder here. And let's enclose in a box PQRS. I've drawn there. And then we need to transfer these points 2, 4, 6, and 8 because 1, 3, 5, 7. 1, 3, 5, 7 are the midpoints of this square. So I can straight away mark those points. Right, the midpoints I have straight away marked there. The next is to mark the points 2, 4, 2, 4, 6, and 8. 
So to do that, of course, again, when we discuss about how to draw an ellipse or how to draw the isometric view of the circle, we have already done this. So I have point two, draw a vertical line, draw a vertical line passing through two and eight parallel to parallel to PS. And similarly on the other side, and because the circle is all symmetric, similarly from four, uh, I mean through four and six, you draw a vertical line. From two and four, you draw a horizontal line. From through eight and six, you draw a horizontal line. So these uh, this 2, 4 and 8, 6 are parallel, 2, 8 and 4, 6 are parallel. So we will draw this over there. Of course, I am not elaborating on the steps because we have already done this uh, in the earlier session. Right. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. Now we look at the front view. For this point 1, in the front view this is the height, that is the vertical height. So measure this height and put it here. And similarly, for 2, of course, 2 and uh, 8 is the same height. Measure this vertical height and transfer it there. And of course, similarly for 3, 4, 5, and 6. And for the corresponding point, measure the corresponding vertical height here and transfer it over there. Right? So for all these 8 points, I have measured the vertical height in the frame view and I transfer it there. Now join all these 8 points. So, this is an ellipse again. After cutting and removing the top portion, what you see there will be an ellipse and that's what we have drawn there. This is the truncated portion. And now, draw the uh, base of the cylinder here. So I have drawn the base and again recollect earlier what I told. When you have a cylinder and the top and the bottom face we have to join using a tangential line. So that is what I have done and this is the truncated isometric view of the given cylinder. Again I repeat, of course uh, I am only telling you the method if it is isometric view take the actual uh, or the true lens if the, the question says isometric projection. Take the isometric scale and then draw it accordingly. 